Tom here. Today I'm going to be working on the emergency brake on the old CJ5. I don't believe there are any of the internal components like the shoes and all that uh, for the emergency brake which comes off the transfer case. So I'm going to be pulling the uh, drive shaft first of all which I'm not going to show because that's pretty easy. And then we'll be um, draining the transfer case fluid and removing the drum brake. Well I've got my dirty clothes on. I'm gonna be crawling underneath the Jeep working off the ground. I've got a piece of cardboard down there. There's my impact driver. You're also gonna need a 9 16 inch wrench or socket and ratchet and a half inch wrench. And the main uh, socket you're gonna need for the bolt on the drum is an 11 16 Okay, I'm underneath the Jeep looking at the brake drum, uh, which is right here. I've already removed the drive shaft, which involves removing these four nuts from this side of the flange. And then from the rear, you need to remove the two U-bolts. These are 9 16 inch wrench. The rear U-bolts on the uh, universal joint are half inch. So I've put these nuts back on here because I'm going to use them to pull the, the drum after I get this main nut off, which is an 11 16 and I'm going to do that with this impact wrench right here. So that's the next step. Let's do that. There it goes. And there's a washer on there too. You want to remove that. There it is. Nut and washer off. Set those aside. The next thing I'm going to do is drain transfer case fluids. You can access the drain plug through this big hole right here. A regular 3 8 inch drive will fit this. It's a little messy, but not too bad. I have a rag nearby. There it comes. Okay, we're finished with that. for Good enough for now anyway. It's not 100% drained, but that's enough for now. I'm going to put the plug back in. I'm going to try and save this oil too, because I just changed it a little bit ago, and... I cleaned my pan out really good and I'm going to try to reuse it. So I'm going to just snug the plug back up so it doesn't leak anymore. I'm going to take my drain uh, pan and cover it so it doesn't get a bunch of crap in there. Maybe I can reuse it. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a two-jawed gear puller and put it on uh, two of those nuts that are on the flange and then push against the shaft in the center and pull that flange and the whole drum off. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, here's the style of puller I'm using. Just a regular two-jawed gear puller. And I'm gonna catch, I put two of these nuts on a little more than the other two. And then I'm gonna catch these two nuts and pull this whole flange and the drum's gonna all come off at once. Get this adjusted here a little bit. Okay, so it takes a little wrangling to get it on there, but once you get it looking like that, you're ready to go. So now I just need to turn this end and let the puller do its work. And actually it'd be the same difference if I spin this, so that's going to be the same and probably easier for me to hold the wrench still and spin the whole drum. Maybe. And depending on how high, how tight the drum is, you may have to hold it with a bar or something in the holes and 
use the wrench but this one looks like it's going to come right off and you can see it's starting to separate from the backing plate already see right here it's going to separate right there the backing plate's going to stay see we're getting separation Almost off. That's good because I'm almost at the end of my puller. Not quite. There it is. There's my drum and look at there's no shoes or anything in there, no no lever for this to work, no springs, no nothing. And my drum's a real mess, so I've got some work to do. I think next I'm gonna take the backing plate off because that's gonna need to be cleaned up and I'm gonna have to mount my new parts to that. So Okay, next thing is to remove these four bolts and take the whole backing plate off because we're going to have to clean that up and put some new parts on it. They look like they're 9 16 so let's try that. I'm not sure if they're all the same length so I'm going to keep track of where they go. Yeah, that's pretty long. That's about a two and a half inch bolt. That's exactly the same as the first one. That one's a little shorter. So the shorter one so far is the top right. And the shortest of all is the bottom right, which is only three quarters or so. Okay, I have the four bolts out of my backing plate. And I had to scrape some of the gunk off around here. To release the plate it was kind of gunked down there but now I think I got her loose there it comes there it is I got a lot of debris up in here I'm going to be cleaning all that out look at all that stuff so I'm going to clean that all up get my new parts and we'll be back in business clean up this backing plate so there you have it. That's how to remove your, your drum and backing plate. I'll make another video on doing the installation of the parts and getting the brakes actually working. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you tune in for the next one to find out how the rest of the project goes. Thanks for watching you guys.